Ooh, what's going on team? It's Ricky with Tackle Solutions. I hope that you guys are all having an amazing Sunday. So it is 6.35 p.m. and just like we do every single Sunday at 6.30, so I apologize that I am five minutes late, but I really hope that I earn your thumbs up. So none of these live Sunday stock talks, all you have to do is subscribe to the YouTube channel, turn on your post notifications so you get notified when it is that I go live. It is literally that easy. So I'm gonna say what's up to the people that are tuning in live right now. So why are you five minutes late? Um, just, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, it took me a little bit longer for me to set up the live stream, I apologize. Uh, what's going on Loza, what's going on Dame, what's going on Matthew, what's up Omar? Justin, my guy. Long time no see. What's going on, Charles? Zero skills, Princess Hakeem. What's going on, Caesar? Unstoppable, Riley, Ismail, uh, Roberto, Dominic, Josh, Keish. Where are we all from? So I'm from Arizona. I'm not from Arizona. I'm actually from California, but I live in Arizona now. So let me know where you guys are all from. Here we go. Ah, I like it. What's going on, Peter? What's going on, Victor? What's going on? Uh, holy smokes. There are, <laughs> uh, we got the whole team here. You see, it's, it's fun. Again, if you guys wanna tune on in, all you guys have to do is subscribe and make sure you guys get alerted when it is that I go live. Uh, there we go, Blake, we got Matthew, we got Joshua, we got Bobby, we got we got Lenny. Wait, no, that's, let's see, oh. Here we go, Dustin. All right, I like it. Well, we got people all over the United States and literally all over the world. So I see Los Angeles, Ecuador, Colombia, Miami, Las Vegas, Greece. LPP, we got some people that aren't part of LPP. At the end of the day, all we want to do here is try to provide the most value as possible within this 30 minute time frame. So let's go ahead and do it. Uh, super excited to see what this week has to offer. There's no question that with great um, volatility comes great responsibility. And I just wanna make sure that I do my part, right? I'm going to be sharing my opinion on the stocks that you guys share with me. All I ask you in return is just like Peter, took time out of his day in this ticker call out format to break down the biggest mistake that we see a lot of beginners make is they don't have a plan when they are about to enter a trade or an investment opportunity, right? So with this, Peter, with the ticker call out format, he identifies the support, the resistance, where he plans to enter and exit, the idea behind it, so long swing trade, his stop loss, which is a form of risk management, and why he sees potential. So that is a very quick kind of like synopsis, right, of why he sees value in the stock. So what it allows me to do is it at least just gives me insight that like he took time out of his day to break down and to plan out this stock. So all I ask you is I really hope that throughout this video, if you would like me to break down your stock, and I'm gonna be putting down every stock that I break down here on the left side column, all I ask you is to post it in the ticker call out format. Not just the ticker symbol, but the ticker call out format. So Justin Lawrence, um, he's gonna be in the, uh, posting the ticker call out format, uh, just, so you, uh, just so you guys can break it down. So there it goes. This is a, let's see, how can I pin this? Can I, ooh. Little, little pin message for the boys, there we go. Now we don't have to type it in. Now no one has an excuse on, on why they can't post it in, the, in ticker call it format. So in the Sunday Stock Talk off on a positive note. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, break this down. So let me know if you're from Vegas, we can network. I am not from Vegas, but I appreciate that. So I'm gonna start breaking down the ones that have already been shared, where's my Good old friend. So we got George with DRN, and then we have uh, ACST. So uh, A, what was that? CST. Nope, I don't think I broke that one down. Oh, is it ACST or ASCT? Ace. No. Yep, no, that was correct. And then DRN. So I know about DRN. Um, altogether, uh, one of the things, and again, this is just my opinion. Let me know, again, we're all about having an open mind. So just because I agree with something doesn't mean that you have to as well. At the end of the day, we are all wired in different ways and I want to empower you to be your own person. Just because I do something does not mean it's the perfect way in doing so. I'm human, I make a bunch of mistakes just like everyone else. At the end of the day, you just wanna make sure that you do your part in understanding what it is that you are doing and having a reason behind it so you can either learn from it or make a profit from it, which are both positive takeaways. So what I 
want to say about DRN is as of right now, this triple leverage ETF, yeah, I do agree that it aggressively sold off. Yes, I do agree that it's extremely oversold. It does offer a lot of upside potential. And as of right now, I would not say that the direction is super clear. This is not something that has been consistently been making higher highs, but it does offer these like little uh, pushes, right? It pushes up, hits a resistance, pulls back, pushes up, hits a resistance, pulls back. So it looks like it's trying to push up again. So I 100% understand why it is that you're paying attention to it. Uh, one of the things that I would try to treat this is because we're still trading below the overall SMA line, this is an overall descending pattern. I I like to have a big focus on overall direction. So I would take this day by day. This would not be something that I would swing trade myself. I would focus on this just to be a day trade. And if the intraday opportunity makes sense, then great, so be it. But Friday is a perfect example of when I would not trade it. It's trading between the middle and bottom VWAP. Overall direction is a descending pattern. It just wouldn't make sense. If DRN, first of all, it has very low volume and it's not something that I would personally trade, but if DRN begins to indicate signs of an uptrend and begins to make higher highs, it begins to trade in between the middle and top view up within the intraday, then yeah, it would maybe begin to make a little bit more sense because the direction is in your favor and it's showing signs of an uptrend pattern. As of right now, DRN is not showing any of that. So because of that, I would personally say I would rather wait for confirmation than hope it actually happens. So we got ticker symbol. So we got a little pharmaceutical company here, ACST. I have not had the best experiences with pharmaceutical companies. I can see why you're talking about it. It had a huge day on Friday and it's been having a huge what? past 10, 15 days, came from lows of 25 cents and it's been pushing up ever since. It is at 67 cents. So it has nearly tripled in price in the past 15 days, maybe. So first of all, that should raise some eyebrows. You know, why is it indicating signs of an uptrend and why is it pushing up so aggressively? It's something to ask yourself. Don't just go with the flow. Ask yourself, have a reason behind what it is that you do. I would look much more into the fundamental of, you know, are they working on a vaccine? It's a pharmaceutical company. In my experience, I have had more red days and green days when it comes down to trading these pharmaceutical companies. And that's why I personally just don't like them and don't like to trade them. Just because I don't do something doesn't mean you shouldn't either. There's nothing wrong with testing new markets, especially if you work well with them. And the only way that you can figure out or discover if you work well with them is if you test it out. At the end of the day, look at the RSI, look at the MACD, look at the overall direction. It's a descending pattern. Can it continue to uptrend? Of course, anything can happen. Will it most likely continue to uptrend? Well, I would again first revisit the fundamental side of why it's pushing up, but also take into consideration that it is very overbought and that it would make sense that it could pull back before it continues to uptrend. So that is my two cents on those two. So here we go. So we got uh, Saren Sound, we got ticker symbol LB. I appreciate you posting that in the ticker call out format. One of the friendly reminders is if you guys are receiving um, or experiencing some lag within this video, all you guys have to do is lower maybe the quality of the setting of your video setting and refresh the screen. Um, and then that should hopefully give you better video quality. So just let me know if that helps out. Uh, but we got ticker symbol LB, overall uptrend pattern, very aggressive sell off as it makes sense as the overall market has been selling off. But I like this flow. It's been making almost higher highs and higher lows. I can see why you're paying attention to it, especially with the MACD and just recently breaking above the EMA line. So let me see if I can, yeah, I'm not gonna find your breakdown again. Uh, but overall, based off of where it's at right now to the upside potential, great margins. As long as you do your part in managing risk that if it does, you know, just because it's made higher highs before doesn't mean that it has to do it again. It can get rejected here and just continue to drop. So just take that into consideration that patterns tend to repeat themselves. They don't have to. So the pattern that I see here is we have higher lows, which is a good sign. It's showing signs that it's not going back to previous lows, which is an indication of an uptrend. And it also has higher highs, right? So it's overall making this like upward staircase pattern. So the hope with this one is that it breaks above 14 and that it continues to make new highs to the SMA line, which offers a 20% return. Obviously, confirmation is something that we wanna to work towards, not something that we have to, that has to play out every single time according to plan. So I would set my alert here above 14, actually see if it actually begins to indicate signs of an uptrend. And if not, then I would also set my alert uh, for the break below the EMA line to see what actually ends up happening. I, I really like ticker symbol LB and the pattern that it has to offer. I would just say that don't be surprised if it does pull back, right? So just be, be aware that it doesn't have to continue the previous pattern that it had going for it. Do you guys get what I mean? Here we go. So we got ticker symbol SGP. So S, 
GP. Here we go. I appreciate you posting in the ticker call out format and it doesn't look like it's loading. I'm gonna have to do something else. I don't know if you typed in the ticker symbol incorrectly. Here we go. UAL, so this is United Airlines. Uh, after I made a video, I think about, um, I think it might have been just yesterday that I uploaded it about the top five stocks. I asked people that, hey, you know, these are the five industries in which that, you know, I felt like were affected the most. And I selected American Airlines. A lot of people either agreed or disagreed with me. At the end of the day, we're all entitled to our own opinion. Um, United Airlines is definitely one that a lot of people saw value in. So I, I understand why it is that you're paying attention to this. I just wanted to uh, see what your breakdown. So support. What is it? Support resistance, 80, 20, sell point. Okay. Long-term investment. I like that. So, all right. So right now it's trading at a price of about $30, right? $28. One of the things this is, and, and please feel free to let me know what you guys think. I still think that United Airlines has a lot to prove, just like every other airline out there. Overall, it's still trading below the SMA line and it's not making higher highs. There is nothing that like we're missing out on with United Airlines, American Airlines, JetBlue, nothing like that. It's it's all still selling up. Things have not gotten better. They're just, they, they in a sense, according to the market price, haven't gotten worse. Um, overall, flights are down 90% and again, these, we are coming up on up and coming earnings reports. So just take that into consideration that before you go all in, hoping that things just begin to recover, just do your part in watching your position size and that you truly wait for some indication of a reversal or some confirmation. And as of right now, we're not making higher highs, right? We're making, if anything, lower highs. We're not making lower lows, but as of right now, it's trading below the EMA line and it wouldn't be much of a surprise that if it can continue to sell off based off of previous lows. So all I'm saying here is please be careful with your position size. Even if it's a long-term investment, I still think that things can potentially get worse before they even get better. But it, but again, that is just my opinion. So I'm gonna set my alert. I agree. I do see potential on United Airlines in comparison to where it's trading at right now to where it was trading at right before all this happened, right, right around $80, 173 percent the potential is there but what i want to remind you is that some industries take longer than others to recover and it literally doesn't mean that it has to recover in a couple months it could recover in years and you just have to understand the long-term vision of this potential investment and make sure that maybe you don't put too much money that you get in over your head i think that's respected right that's respectful that you you know you you approach this with an open mind that yeah i do want to take advantage of you know united airlines but i want to do it in a way that makes sense to me long term so i'm going to set my alert here but i'm also going to set my alert if this thing begins to make lower lows and i'm going to set one more alert if it actually breaks below twenty dollars and begins to you know, approach previous lows or 180 day, four hour lows. So I really like, and I'm really happy that uh, you asked me to rate this one down. Um, so here we go, ticker symbol T. So let's go ahead and break this down, AT&T. So can I get some input? What do you guys think about AT&T? So ticker symbol T, this is pretty much how it was trading before. It had a resistance right around $40. It did a really good job. It was not making higher highs, but it did a very good job um, just hitting the overall highs. If I'm not mistaken, this initial push that it had, it was like the merger between, what was it, Sprint, at and something like that. Overall, really strong push, a lot of consolidation, and it never was able to break $40. So kind of like what I would work towards aiming for is right around $36 to $38, that if things do begin to get back to normal for T, right, at and that that's a price point in which I would be very satisfied with. Right now, one of the things that I see, this is just my opinion, is that we are testing this SMA line. It's pushing up, but it's testing the resistance level where we might get rejected here before things get any better. We have an up and coming earnings report as well on 422. Something to take into consideration if things are not getting better. Um, and this could probably uh, potentially act as a negative catalyst, just as it could potentially act as a positive catalyst. So I do agree, AT&T is down, AT&T is a solid company in my opinion. But at the end of the day, as of right now, on the technical side, we are approaching a little bit more of a resistance that we've gotten rejected at multiple times. I feel like it's really struggled to break above $31. So instead of getting in at $31 and hoping that it goes up and then it potentially getting rejected, just like it has before, I think that focusing this as a critical point that, hey, maybe if it breaks above $32 or 33, I can consider the idea of slowly investing more into my position size. Just something to take into consideration. 
So let's go ahead and break down five more stocks for you guys. Again, I really hope that I earn, I'm earning your thumbs up throughout this video. So what's going on, Christian? So we got Netflix, right? So we got Netflix and then we got Joey with DAL. All right, let's go ahead and break that down. So all right. All right, so we got Netflix. Uh, one of the things, how many of you guys have, I wanted to ask you very quickly, how many of you watched my video? I think, and the, this video didn't do well and I didn't expect it to do well because I'm not talking about what stocks are gonna go up. I talked about what stocks are gonna go down. Um, and in my opinion, this is just an opinion. Please just understand that. I feel like because of America and other European countries are talking about opening up the borders and getting America back into business, there's no question that a lot of online platforms like Netflix have seen a surplus of activity during these very unfortunate times. That's just my opinion. It would make sense. So if things do begin uh, to get back to normal, it would only make sense that Netflix and a lot of streaming platforms that saw a surplus during this very unfortunate time begin to correct themselves. Do you get what I mean? That they might begin, I'm not saying that they're gonna go all the way back to previous trade prices, but at the end of the day, that things can go back to where they were trading roughly before. So they do have, an, they do have up and coming earnings report. So it would only make sense that, I do agree with you, that it does have an up and coming earnings, uh, when is it? It's on the 21st of this month. So I think that is very positive news because again, with the probably a surplus of, um, you know, of subscriptions, of activity, of users, it would only make sense that their earnings are expected to be even that much better, which can cause a positive catalyst. But one of the things that I also want to remind you is that it also is so overbought. It made previous, you know, all new highs on the 180 day chart that it does have margin to pull back. So all I want to say is that other than its earnings reports, I don't see anything else to look forward to on Netflix if we do get America and other countries back to business. That's just my opinion. So uh, do as you please, but at the end of the day, I just wanted to share that idea with you guys. We got ticker symbol DAL. So this is gonna be a very similar breakdown for me than uh, when I broke down, what was it, UAL, which is United Airlines. Overall, I don't feel like we're missing out on anything. I would set my alerts for when this thing actually does begin to indicate signs a bit recovering. As of right now, you can see all my alerts up here. All my alerts up here. So if it does begin to indicate signs of a reversal, I can revisit it. Right now, this thing isn't going anywhere where I feel like I'm missing out. I think things can still get worse before they get better, and Delta Airlines is no exception. It does have an up and coming earnings report, so that's up to you on deciding do you think that it's gonna report a better or worse earnings than expected due to this very unfortunate time, and airlines being down over 90% based off of the year, the previous year. So something to take into consideration, right? Um, I like this one, ticker symbol VXX. What's going on, Michael? Hope you're having an amazing day, VXX. Here we go. So v VXX overall was a continuous descending pattern, had a really strong push up. So I see why it is that you're paying attention to this. Um, based off of its previous performance and how it was performing, it makes sense on, especially with Barkley, right? And it's this being like the uh, inverse, right? Um, why you would think that, hey, this can potentially recover. Uh, at the end of the day, there is no indicate, it's making lower lows and lower highs, so to keep this very simple, I'm gonna set my alert. If it triggers and it, it can remind me, you know, when and if this thing begins to make higher highs and higher lows. Until then, I would not touch this. I would not hope for it to recover. I would just wait, set your alerts, and if it does begin to show signs of indication of reversal, then great, we can revisit this. Until then, I, I would not care too much about it. Uh, Honest Live LUV. We got a lot of people asking about airlines. If I'm not mistaken, this is Southwest, right? LUV. Yeah, Southwest Airlines. Very similar breakdown. Overall descending pattern consolidation. Uh, it's pretty much going to be testing 180 day lows very soon. Uh, it has an up and coming earnings reports. These are all very similar. Um, again, I'm just going to set my alerts and we can follow up with it after earnings. I, I would not feel comfortable holding it during earnings because of how unfortunate I think it's gonna be. So, uh, but again, of course, I can be missing out on something. If it does begin to get its initial push, great. At the end of the day, I'd rather revisit this when 
things stabilize a little bit better and then consider to you know invest my money when it begins to make sense to me. So what's going on, Mike? Ticker symbol D-U-K. I appreciate you posting that in a ticker call out format, Mike. Here we go. All right. So Duke Energy. Okay, so this one's all a little bit all over the place. Um, it's at a critical point where I would say that it's at the SMA line, and this is the part that's a little bit like iffy for me. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think that this is a good deal? I just think that based off of how it's been trading, it, it's it's had a really nice run after that really you know poor sell off, right? Now it's at a point where it's overbought enough that it can begin to change direction just as much as it can continue to push up. So this isn't that it's an amazing deal, it's that we would hope that it continues to uptrend. So because of this, I don't feel like this is an amazing deal based off of previous highs. Do I think that it can continue to indicate signs of an uptrend? Of course, I think anything can go up just as much as it could go down. So I would rather do my part in setting my alerts, revisiting this when the direction becomes so a little bit more clear because it's overbought enough that I do see more downside potential than I do see upside. Do I, so I do not feel like the risk to reward ratio is essentially there. But you guys feel free to let me know what you guys think. So what's going on, Alexander? Ticker symbol C-A-T. So these are, cat, is this Caterpillar? There we go. So we got Caterpillar in the house. Overall, very aggressive descending pattern. Pushed up to highs of 130, pulled back to 110. So I see why it is that you see potential in this. Friendly reminder, as an up and coming earnings on 428 at 7.30 a.m. Central Time. So I would set my alert here. Yes, it does look oversold enough. The MACD looks good. The RSI looks fine. That it can begin to push up. And based off of previous highs, that offers up a 10% margin of profit with a little bit more for it to sell off. So again, make sure that if it begins to indicate signs of a sell off, that you have some form of risk management. But I do agree that it does have a nice upside potential just as much as it can sell off. So you just have to make sure that when you are in, in this position that, that, that it's still going according to plan. So I'm gonna set my alert here if it begins to break above 117.14, but I'm also gonna set my alert if this thing begins to break below 110 as I wanna be alerted um, you know, with its direction and the way that it's heading. So what's going on? We got, Ooh wow, you guys are really feeling it today, huh? <laughs> All right, IVR. $3.69. So this is personally not something that I would put my money in. It's just too low of a cap stock. The direction is not super clear. I do agree that this could be a very high risk, high reward type of approach, especially with the upside potential. I get it. It offers over 300% return if things get back to normal. At the end of the day, this thing is not showing me signs of higher highs. Maybe when it begins to do the exact opposite of what it did, I would feel a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, I might miss out on some of the push, but at the end of the day, I would feel more comfortable putting money in something that's actively and proactively increasing in value rather than it consolidating and just going all over the place, right? Just as much as it can recover, it can begin to sell off. So because of that, I would say that this would be a little bit more of a higher risk, higher reward, as the direction is not super clear on ticker symbol IVR. Uh, but again, that's just my opinion. So uh, let me see what else I can break down here. So ZNGA. We're going through quite a bit today. Ooh, there we go. Zynga uh, Incorporated um, overall, very overbought been doing a very good job consistently showing signs of an uptrend, very overbought, a lot of pullback potential, but again, just be aware that if I'm not mistaken, this thing should have an up and coming earnings, yep, on 429. So just be aware of that, that it's been doing very well. So because of its performance, it could see a positive catalyst due to its earnings and its surplus of you know demand during this very unfortunate time. So I'm gonna set my alert for previous highs. One of the things that I do wanna say is, I just feel like on this one, because it's so overbought already, this is just my opinion, I really like to take into consideration the risk to reward ratio. And this is so overbought that I see more pullback potential than I do see upside. And because of that, I just don't feel like the trade would be worth it as, you know, if you go into this as an investment, that's up to you. I still don't feel like it's a good deal. And if things do begin to get back to normal and the demand falls for ZNGA, it would only make sense that it would correct itself and go back to previous trading levels. So that's just my two cents. Uh, you guys feel free to do what it is that you know you guys want to, uh, but I'm going to set my alert if it breaks below 650 as I would like to be reminded uh, where this thing is heading. So 
Here we go. Uh, we're doing quite a bit of breakdowns. I'm pretty sure I've done over 10, but you guys keep them coming and uh, I'll do a couple more. So ticker symbol MAC. All right, so overall consistent descending pattern. We're not missing out on anything. I'm just gonna set my alert for the break above the SMA line and I can re revisit this. I can revisit this when the direction is a little bit more clear. I don't wanna spend too much time on something that is not indicating any signs of a recovery. So we got ticker symbol BAS. What's going on? Oh, oh it's BA. The, the S was for each support. Uh, my bad. So that's Boeing. Okay. So Boeing, um, I would treat this if they're in comparison to like, you know, I was kind of back and forth when it came down to when I selected American Airlines as the airline that I wanted to go with. Boeing was one of the airlines that I wanted to consider, but it's not really viewed as an airline and more of like a producer of airplanes, right? Um, altogether, it has had a negative influence. I would find it to be the most, I don't know. I just, I respect Boeing and what it stands for. And I just feel like necessarily America wouldn't necessarily let it bail uh, or fail. Um, because of how much skin it has in the game and, and how it backs up the United States. Uh, because of that, I would really set my alert. Uh, I feel like we're, we would be closer to seeing a recovery on this in comparison to any other airline, uh, but I would have to look a little bit more into it. So I'm gonna set my series of alerts here. Um, and as an up and coming earnings report again, which that can act as a negative catalyst before it acts as a positive one. So that's on 429. So make sure that you guys set your reminders and add that to your calendars, especially if you already have some skin in the game. But I really do appreciate uh, you calling this one out and bringing it to my attention. Uh, I think it's pretty solid. So I wanna do one more. So uh, let's see, TRNX, let's go ahead and break that one down. Let's see, is this a good one? Oh, no. Uh, TRNX, it pushed up 47%. I just, I don't like pump and dumps. And you guys can say whatever it is that you want for this. But when I see a surplus of demand and exposure and it's done this multiple times and overall it just continues to sell off, it's just showing me signs of a pump and dump. Um, and yeah, uh, they don't hold up here for a very long period of time. Very unfortunate, but a lot of people lose money more than probably make. Uh, if you're too late to it, it would only make sense that it can continue to pull back and make lower lows. So please do your part in only taking advantage of opportunities in which you understand and see value in and have some form of risk management. You need to understand your place. If you're a beginner trader, then understand you need to learn how to walk before you could run. And yes, although there is great opportunity, with great opportunity comes great responsibility. And anyone can make money doing anything. At the end of the day, you wanna understand what it is that you're doing. And that's the message that I kinda of wanna leave you guys with, is like, um, you know, there is no question that during such an unfortunate time that there is a lot of opportunity all around us. Not just in the stock market, but in, you know, the amount of people that I've, I've seen create you know, e-commerce stores, the, the amount of people that began as they lost their jobs, start their own business. There is so many ways on how you can make money. At the end of the day, let's just make sure that you understand what it is that you are doing. The stock market, just like any other market out there, is not an easy market to be successful in. It takes time, it takes practice, and there is not one perfect way in how to be successful in any market. At the end of the day, and it, it's about problem solving. One of the things that I love most about what it is that I do in the stock market, and just like many other markets, is that the markets that I partake in is that I find them challenging. And it's one of the things that I enjoy most is I like the challenge that, you know, that we get to experience every single day as day traders. If you guys are commenting on my eyes, I, as you guys saw, if you guys follow me on Instagram, the link is down below if you guys don't. Uh, but I got a motorcycle and in Arizona, you don't have to wear helmets and I wore glasses and it dried out my eyes. But if all those that are making jokes about if I'm high or something, I don't smoke and if you knew me, you would know that. But um, yeah, I, I really do appreciate your guys' time. I just wanted to end this live stream with a very positive message. You know, there's a lot of people that, you know, were laid off. There's a lot of people that were furloughed. Please, like, I, I love that you guys are watching this video because you're not watching this video because of, you know, if I'm entertaining or anything like that, you're watching this video to 
stay proactive, stay busy during this very unfortunate time. And I think that's a very respectful and beautiful thing. Now you wanna make sure that you have the positive mindset to tackle and take on this market. If the stock market is, is actually something that you want to partake in, understand that it's gonna take time. You're gonna make mistakes, you're going to fail. But at the end of the day, nothing in life worth having will ever come easy. And the stock market is no exception. So yes, it does take problem solving. But at the end of the day, with trial and error, you will figure out how to be self-sufficient. Just like when it comes down to how I trade in the stock market. I am no way a perfect trader. But one of the reasons that I feel like a lot of people see value in what it is that I do is that I am very consistent. I trade the same thing over and over again, and yes, that might irritate some people, but at the end of the day, why change something that works? When you find, a, when you find your niche and when you find a working system, why change it? If you're a person that buys and sells potato chips and you make a living off of it and you, you found your niche, you found your crowd, you found your demand, who cares if someone else sells lobster? You found your, your niche and all you have to do is scale. That is my goal for each and every single one of you. It's to work hard and working towards being self-sufficient, not being told what to do, not trading off of alerts, not trading off of people's suggestions. Your goal, just like you know, when it comes down to like a job or an occupation, is to solve problems, to do this on your own. Yes, you might have some questions, but you never want to be told what to do because you won't understand what happens with the outcome. At the end of the day, if you at least have a reason behind what it is that you're doing, you will understand what went wrong and how you can fix it, or you will make a profit from it. And both are positive takeaways. And that's what I want to leave you guys with. So uh, one of the things that I did want to remind you is, um, just like we do every single um you know, Monday through Friday. Uh, I am one of the only people that trade live literally every single day. So whenever you're ready, you guys can refresh your screen. In the very bottom of the description, there's a $40 off coupon. If and only if you are ready to join the Learn Plan Profit team and watch me trade live as soon as tomorrow, you guys can click the link. It's gonna be $40 off when it is that you are ready and if you want to be able to watch me trade live every single morning. So I really do appreciate you guys' time. I hope that I earned your thumbs up. If you guys have any questions about the stocks we broke down, all you guys have to do is join our free investing group. That's that first link down below. And then you guys can um, ask me any questions through our Discord chat. So like always team, continue working hard, continue following dreams, let your passion be your drive for success. I hope and wish you guys and all your loved ones an amazing Sunday and a successful trading week. Like always, let's make sure that we end the year on Arena. Take it easy, team.